Hey guys, Dr. Goslin here in Los Angeles. We're going to be doing today a labioplasty menorah along with a clitoral hood. It's pretty often that I combine the two because everything in your body tends to be symmetrical. So you'll often see that enlarged labias come with an also enlarged clitoral hood. And it's really important to assess that preoperatively because what you don't want to do is do a labioplasty, thin out, minimize the labia menorahs, and then have a very, I call it being top heavy, where you have a very bulky clitoral hood. And it really then all of a sudden becomes the main focus and most of the patients come back and, and they want it done anyways. So I usually do them together. So the healing process, which is very similar, and, and then you're all done and you have a beautiful labia as well as clitoral hood. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you guys my markings and then we'll take it from there. So even though there's nothing wrong with these labias whatsoever, if they do cause discomfort or cosmetically make you uncomfortable, we want to help our patients by empowering them. And you can see the labias are, I call these my, my wing labias, they look like wings, and they protrude outside of the vulva, uh, the labia majora, and they probably cause a lot of discomfort when wearing clothes or exercising, and maybe during intimacy it may cause some discomfort. But what you also see is that you've got redundant tissue along the clitoral hood. So we want to make all of this disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and make my incisions from here all the way down and, and really minimize the look of these labias and clitoral hood. So what I'm going to do is I, I usually use landmarks. So I'm going to start up here. And I usually just like, I don't want to over resect because what I don't want to do is cause amputation of the labia majora. So I usually try to stay one centimeter to 1.5 centimeters from the base. So about right here. And I'm just going to follow my little lines and come down and I'm going to just draw this out. So it's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to use a curved linear approach on this. And then I'm going to come to the clitoral hood at the apex all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to resect that so that we get rid of this. And really what she's gonna be left with is a very beautiful little clitoral hood that really fits with her much smaller labia menorah. So those are our markings. So we're gonna be excising part of the labia menorah as well as the redundant tissue and folds on the clitoral hood. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So we're using my Elman Surgitron. You can see the needle tip, how fine it is. And I'm just gently dissecting and following the lines that we already drew. And I'm just going to just slowly remove this labia and then we're gonna reconstruct it by re-suturing it together. And she's doing amazing. All right, you guys, so we completed our labioplasty and clitoral hood. We did it in about an hour and 15 minutes, purely under local. How was the pain? It was fine. Did you watch okay. the show? Yeah. Okay, and look how beautiful it looks. We've got a symmetrical hood with symmetrical labias. They're nice and flushed against the, vul the vulva, so they're not gonna protrude anymore and bother her. And I think uh, overall it's gonna be a really beautiful look. Don't forget post-operatively, I always call the first few days after a labioplasty, my Frankenstein period, because it gets really swollen and ugly because it rubs against everything. But we're gonna go over your post-op instructions and you get a goodie bag from us, you know, you're gonna do great. Okay? Thank you. Awesome.